Welcome everybody to the grand finals of the Monday Premium Go for StarCraft Cup. Spawning here in the top right corner of the map from Alien Invasion. He's going to be the Blue Zerk player. He doesn't need us to link his Twitter, but I'm going to do it anyways. Alien Invasions. Oops. <laughs> Wrong copy paste. That was anticlimactic. Alien Invasions Golden. And his opponent and teammate. Perhaps a little lesser known. But still a really talented player nonetheless. Also from Alien Invasion, the Green Terran, my friend, Lily Kaneen. Who you can find on Twitter, at Lily Kaneen SE2. Again, he just took revenge out with some really cool tactics. He streams almost every single day, and he's one of the top, if not the top, 2v2 players in StarCraft 2. Not a lot of people know about him, but I'm really glad that I discovered him like last year because he is been one of my most entertaining and fun players that I've had the pleasure of uh, of uh, hanging out with and watching and, and casting in tournaments like this. Again, weird strategies. He proxy BCs uh, against Jokshi and wins. He he quadruples starports versus revenge and makes it happen. Not a lot of people can do that. But this isn't a TVT. This is a TVZ. And Golden, we just finished going through weeks of qualifiers for, go uh, for sorry WCS America, WCS Europe. And when we saw Golden in Europe... Boy, oh man, was this guy crazy. His macro games versus Yoda. His intense matches versus everyone else he came through. All to qualify in the end and win the later, latter cups. I mean, later cups, rather. But Speaking is too difficult at this point in the day. I, I can't help but think he's got this series in the bag. I don't know who you guys are vet, uh, voting, uh, betting on or voting for. But what I do find like phenomenally crazy is how close these bets are. I mean, this is absolutely downtime filler because there's no cheese actually happening right now, but it's worth noting Lilikanine 2.0 has 540 bets. Lilikanine 2.1 has 1,364 bets. Golden, for both option, has 726-ish bets. So, uh, there's a lot of faith, but I'm surprised just how even, hell, even in the favor, Lilikanine has these bets going. We'll see what ends up happening. My personal, I don't know. Again, love Lilikanine. Good friend, good guy, great Terran. But I gotta give this series to Golden. He roached Hydras a lot lately, and a lot of Terran players have been struggling to deal with this. But, I guess the one catch-all is, again, Lily Kanine doesn't really play like most Terrans do. He's not gonna have the standard responses, and probably won't have standard openings either. But Golden is actually gonna get a little bit aggressive. Six Lings, they're not gonna be finding a Reaper to deal with, so this will allow them to go across the map immediately. Uh, the Golden Gas was, of course, taken very early. Again, a lot of this is an anticipation of, uh, of those Reapers, so you need to get that speed out really quick. <laughs> Golden asking if you can win against the Reddit Star. Of course, for those who don't know this, uh, Lily Kinney posted a TVP build a little while ago that was arguably his or not his. I mean, it really didn't matter in the end, but there was, like, this... The most... The lamest drama I've ever seen in my life around him in this uh, build with his friends, so... It was funny, it's worth a read. If you guys haven't seen it, go look it up. It was it was a laugh and a half. For now though, he's actually got the bunker up. Uh, these lings won't be able to kill these marines straight up, but they should be able to run past the bunker once uh, Metabolic Boost finishes. Ooh, first ling does go down. First blood. And Golden got a little bit greedy there. In fact, loses two lings. So now he can't run past the bunker. Uh, well, I guess technically he could, but Metabolic Boost is so far away, the wall off will probably be done. SV coming back for round two of scouting will unfortunately be bullied out by a couple of queens. What's up? How you doing? Get out of here. Overlord in the main does stop a little bit shy, but it's also got to be careful it doesn't turn into the magnet that uh, will attract these marines out of the bunker. <laughs> Actually, I love the discussion going... I'm sorry, I'm looking at the chat. Normally it's... I'm going to be honest because I love base trade TV chat. Oftentimes it's very nonsensical, but... Uh, you guys bring up some good points. A lot of people talk about, like, you know, um, was it Nerf Shocker says cheesers can't compete with overall solid players. A lot of people, of course, rooting for Lily Kaneen through the bets. Whatever your thoughts may be, guys, I will admit, Golden and Lily Kaneen are going to be a fun series. So I hope you all can enjoy it. And what is this fluff on my microphone? I'm sorry, one sec. Hopefully it's not making too much noise. Oh, gross. What is this? Oh, ugh. A bunch of cat fur got stuck in, like, one of the, the mic slots. Or not Mike Slots, the, uh, the, what's this thing called? The pop filter! The thing in front of my mouth! There you go. Uh, anyways, Golden is actually going to have to deal with Banshees and Hellions. This is not a strategy a lot of people have been using. We kind of saw this resurrected for a little bit. QXC has been a big, uh, I, I guess, user of this build for a long time. There's not a lot of other players I can think of that really go for this. Oftentimes it's the Reapers mixed with Hellions, and those will get some of the job done. But the Overlord's going to scout this, and Golden... 
It's also good to see there's no cloak coming in. This is really important. Scouting no cloak means you know they're not going to dedicate too heavily into this. Uh, but that is a lot of lings coming out of Golden here in a moment. And Golden's lings are pretty good in the early game, guys. You can watch some players throw 40 lings at Hellions and absolutely lose every single ling and not a single Hellion. Uh, but Golden's lings pretty much almost, gu almost always guaranteed to get some kills. Now he's roaming around, and the best case scenario for him, of course, is to try and gauge on creep. Trying to force this out, will catch one of the Hellions, a good start. Uh, but Lily can he stops to take a volley back. Uh, Golden lost the Overlord in the main while this was happening by the looks of it too, so he's, uh, yeah, there's a blood splat over there. Uh, a little bit supply blocked at the moment, but three Overlords are on the way, so this won't be for too long. This Banshee, uh, does he even have the potential for it? Uh, Sporkwalk comes out immediately. Again, he scouted this coming with that first Overlord. He knows Banshees are out. He just doesn't know to what extent or how much dedication Lilikinian's pushing into this. Uh, but the Queens are in position. They are ready to rock and roll. They're ready to tango. And of course, this merry-go-round, let's not forget there's those weird air blockers that limit airspace, so this Banshee can't exactly fly away for free if it gets caught, and it does get realized immediately. Uh, Lings, on the other hand, are going to find these depots down, but lots of Hellions waiting for them at the top of the ramp. This is not how you want to funnel into Hellion fire. <laughs> Ramps are never going to be friendly when you have to run up them into Hellions. Not for Lings, at least. Maybe Roaches. Maybe Roaches. I want to give an extra big shout out, just hang on, while we're getting into this game, guys, since it's going to come down. Ooh, ooh, hang on, actually, more importantly than that, blue flames being made behind this. Uh, actually, I take that back. Sorry. I got excited because I thought this was just standard blue flame, but this is mech blue flame, so this is more expected. But I want to give a quick shout out to all the viewers today. I know I get really thankful and some people like it, some people hate it. But uh, I, I, this is probably the most first bloods I've seen in chat in a long time. It's really nice to see you guys getting active and getting involved in chat. It rocks my world as a caster. Anyways, uh, Golden loses a lot of lings. A lot of freaking lings just went down there. 34 in total for 3 Hellions so far. Not the best trading in the world. Back at home, Golden also confirms, hey, my opponent's going mech. This is something that's a little bit frustrating to deal with a Zerg. But, oh, Roach Drops. Oh, it's going to be Roach Drops. Roach Drops? Okay. Let's talk about why you don't see a lot of players going for this anymore. This used to be, like, the standard response. Like, oh, you see, you're see, you going back? I'm going to go Roach Drops. But that was before Hellbats existed. That was back in Wings of Liberty. And that's when a time where Siege Tanks were the only unit you could get to hold off, uh, hold off Roaches. And... You know, the thing about Hellbats is they do so much damage now. They'll they'll be within the melee range of the tanks, they'll be within the melee range of the Thors. They'll be able to soak the hits and deal a ton of damage. And let's not forget, if roaches are being dropped on top of Hellbats, they'll also be in range of splash damage. What was that about? Oh, an SUV was trapped. <laughs> That's the dumbest turret I've ever seen in my life. Lily Kanine. Shame. Shame. Uh, but while we have roach drops coming up, we also have Mutalists being paired with this. Still, Helling's dealing a bit of damage on the other side of the map. Uh, but the Mutalists will be able to clean this up. I think the Mutalists, by the way, are a great choice. We've seen some players, you watch Pro League, you watch, say, some North American StarCraft. Mass Mutalists can run over mech. You think Thors are an automatic win, you know, the, the definite counter. They can be, but only in very specific situations. I think, I think these Roaches are probably going to be the best bet, in all honesty. Uh, the other the key thing on top of this too is we look at Golden's army and it is way ahead, way ahead. And if there's one thing tanks and Thors don't really do well, I mean they hit hard, they're good at that, but they're not good at dealing with a lot of units at a time. They're so slow. Siege so tank cooldown, Thor attacks, they hit really hard, but they don't hit very fast. And unfortunately, this turret will drive these away from the base. Hellbats within the mineral lines as well, but the Roaches are waiting to be picked up. Calling a bunch of cabs over. I always forget Roaches have tiny little faces. I don't know why. For some reason, I always think that's the mouth. These tiny little heads. These big fat roach bodies. Now my curiosity kind of strikes in, what does Golden do? Right now, he's seen the army of Lily Kinney. He knows it's non-existent. This is one of the biggest cons of mech. You know what? I'm talking this big game about mech. I should have been looking at the production tab. He's going for Stim. Stim's going to complete, but there's not enough Marines for this. Hold the phone, Lily Kinney, making a backwards transition. And I'm, I'm just I'm just gabbing here. I'm not even paying attention, apparently, because I didn't see that coming at all. So focus on the roach drops that are coming down the main. Overlord's will definitely die. He's got to pull these back. But he unloads every single roach. Now, if he's not careful, that Thor will snipe off another. But goes for the reactor right away to cut out marine production. He realizes that there's a lot of bio. Surprise, it's not actually mech. But queens come to the front lines as well. Whether they start spreading creep tumors, which they're going to do, or whether it's for transfuses. Uh, that's a little awkward. Is he going to segment those down there to drop out the... Uh 
the third? Okay, well, whatever the choice is, Blue Flame's gonna have no effect on these units. The bonus damage, of course, only applies to Light, but even without bonus damage versus Roaches, they hit so hard, they actually hit for more than Roaches do. 18 damage versus, well, 18 damage, but that's with an upgrade. Uh, still, though, pushing into this, he will clean this up thanks to the stimmed Marines, not because of the Thors, and certainly not because of the Hellbats. This was something Golden was unexpecting, or not expecting, but while this happens, that's not the end of the game. That's not the end of the fight. Golden said, you know what? That was a distraction. That was, I wanted you to react in the main, because guess what? I've just taken your third. Now, granted, he's not going to kill it, and some SUVs did escape, but Golden did some pretty good damage with these drops, and it's worth noting, look at the resources lost. He's not exactly in the hole. He's still got an army that's superior in number to that of his opponent in... Oh, quadruple creep, tumor block, what a dick move, but it's going to make sure that no third base comes down again anytime soon. Oh, hey, while this is going on, well, uh, we'll do the shout out in a sec. We got the roaches trying to get you an army perhaps a little too early. I mean, for the roaches, they're they're massive and they're great, but yeah, stim bio is still stim bio. Tanks are not sieged though, and I don't know if there's enough marines. This is really scary for Lily Kanine, because Golden's Roach Army is just way too massive. Up to 39 Roaches barreling down the front door. Siege tanks are not in the right position for this. Thor's coming in from behind. Lily Kanine will try to siege out, but it's not going to cut it. Marauders retreating because they can't even fight this. SCVs are pulled, but it's never good when SCVs are pulled. Although these are to safety and not to the front lines. He may end up cleaning this up without losing those SCVs. For Golden, this was meant to kill all the workers, not to kill the army. But he ends up... And uh, Lily Kadeen, he holds, albeit on two bases, but he holds. I don't think he's exactly back in this game, though, because Golden, re uh, recognizing that backwards tech transition towards Bio, then as well connects backwards. Bailing Nest, uh, two of them a mistake, of course, but some traffic hooks on the way, 2-2 two -two finishing up shortly, and of course going back into Mutalisks. This is something that he's already ready to counter his opponent. The creep's going to take almost one minute full to, rec to recede. There was just so much here. And the Mutas get into the main. Get on top of the tech labs. Get on top of the tanks. The Marines are not here. The Medivacs. Well, there's actually a hell of a lot of Medivacs. This is not how I planned or would have even foreseen this game playing out. But anyways, while this is going on, Babylon Boop. Babylon Boop. Thank you for your sub during the intense action. I'm sorry that I couldn't give you some love earlier, but thank you for your support to the channel. You're the third sub today, and you're awesome. Anyways, in this team kill situation, guys, you were promised an entertaining finals, and I kind of, it's like this Maximus Black moment, or not Maximus Black. Whoa, that's a big confusion. I was going to say Maximus Decimus Meridius from Gladiator, where it's just like, are you not entertained? It's really cool seeing different tech swaps out of a Terran player. This happens rarely, if ever. It's too expensive and too impossible to pull off. But for Zerg, it's kind of part of their their norm. You expect to see tech swaps. You want to see Roaches back into Zerglings, back into Hydralisk Roach, whatever the case may end up being. But the creep finally recedes, and please note, guys, just how long that took. Creep is one of the most abusive mechanics in the game. It's really undervalued a lot of the time, but this Mutalist count is also... <laughs> kind of abusive. A Thor volley goes off and they get really low, but there's 23 Mutalisks here. And if you would magic box them instead of stack them, he could have easily take this army, but it's going to be even easier with Bailings and Zerglings surrounding underneath this. Thors get picked up immediately for the evac, but I don't know if that's going to cut it. Mutalisk count is still way too high, and while they're going to die off here for sure, the Zerglings and the Bailings. Actually, hang on, the Bailing count's too low. He can't deal with the Marines, and the Mutalisks have to live now. Golden goes in a situation where he was acceptable to lose the Mutalisks at the cost of killing the entire army. But he came in with a lot more Zerglings than he did Bailings, so the Marines power through. The Marauders go for an attack, and I think uh, Lily Kinnean at this point recognizes it's all or nothing. He's got to push, and he's got to do damage, or Golden's going to end his life through the production line more than anything else. But that's a lot of Zerglings, that's a lot of Bailings that just morphed in across the other side of the field. Gets the surround, holds the army in place, good game is called! <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, Golden will take game number one in this best of three.